Good morning, everyone. Um, I know some of you probably saw on your uh, schedule that this was a presentation by Celeste Reynolds. Uh, so, but uh, she wasn't able to be here today. She had a family emergency. Um, so she called me on, I forgot what day, and said, hey, can you do this for me? I was, Absolutely. Uh, so today I want to talk about spreading the word about using OpenStreetMaps in the classroom. Um, I think it's really, really important that there is kind of a marriage or some type of relationship uh, with professional mappers uh, and also with students and teachers that kind of will, I think, help to build a geospatial community. Uh, a little bit about Celeste. I want to personally publicly thank Celeste because uh, without her, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't even known about OpenStreetMaps. If you know Celeste, she's very outspoken. Um, she called me one day and said, hey, Greg, you really got to get on this open street maps. I'm like, open street what? Um, she's like, open street maps. It's going to be the next best thing. I'm like, you know, as teachers, we have, you know, maybe two seconds to do a gazillion things at one time. And I was like, all right, Celeste, I'll look at it later. And she wasn't taking, I'll look at it later. She sent me a gazillion emails about open street maps, a couple of YouTube videos. Um, and she really is, if you want an exemplar for a teacher that really uses open street maps in her classroom, she is it. She's probably the best in the country at integrating open street maps uh, into the K-12 K through classroom. Um, so when, you know, talking about open street maps, um, I know a lot of uh, schools are going to this concept of one-to-one, -one, where each uh, student has one electronic device. Usually that's a Chromebook. And in doing so, that Chromebook is usually tagged to Google Suite, a Google Suite of, uh, uh, of software. And so with that said, oftentimes the fall say for us as educators to use Google Maps. Will Google Map this? Will you make a Google uh, Tour, use Tour Builder to use Google? And it's really easy. And it's a great tool to use uh, for uh, teaching kids how to use geospatial technology. Um, but the thing is with OpenStreetMaps, I think it, allows for students to come more engaged. It allows for teachers to uh, show students that you can actually do geography. You're being professional geographers. Not to riff on Google at all. Again, it's a great tool, but I think in the 21st century, OpenStreetMaps is a conduit for allowing students um, to, as we say in the K through 12 world, uh, have college and career readiness, uh, where they can go into colleges or they can go into careers and kind of have some of that nuanced language that you guys as professionals already have. And so, um, and, and again, this presentation was put by Celeste. I'm not gonna take any credit for any of it. This is all her idea. Um, she thinks that the motivating factor for teachers, um, you've really gotta get teachers motivated because when teachers are first exposed to open street maps, um, there is this huge kind of pushback. Um, you know, there's this thought that this is just drawing boxes. This is more like tracing. This is like kindergarten. So there's a huge pushback by teachers uh, that I don't have time for this. And so really, really there has to be a, a, a desire on both the professional community and by teachers to kind of be patient. And, and as we say when I coach football, stay the course. Uh, also too, there has to be a, some way that there can be a marriage between the geography curriculum, whether it be in classes like AP Human Geography or even in world regional geography, where I'm introducing my regional geography students to using OpenStreetMaps um, this coming week. A lot of teachers also don't see the relevance. You know, what's the relevance? How does this uh, coincide with my curriculum? And that's the really, really big hurdle that a lot of students, I'm sorry, a lot of, a lot of teachers have. Um, the AP Human Geography class, like I mentioned before, uh, lends itself to kind of being a, a easy conduit for an entry uh, point for OpenStreetMaps to be taught, uh, particularly in high schools. Uh, but again, the problem is we, we as geography teachers have so much content in a short amount of time. I have really, and, and again, I wanna give credit to Celeste uh, because she really beat me over the head, it's like you've gotta use OpenStreetMaps. And over time, it took me two years to finally see, okay, I can use this on population. I can use this in urban land use. I can use this in rural land use. Um, so there's a lot of marriages to be had with the open um, AP Human Geography curriculum and open street maps. Um, and so with that said, at first glance, um, I think teachers, and there needs to be kind of a public, kind of a, I don't want to use a 
football analogy. I'm an old football coach, but I'm going to use it anyway. Uh, we've got to get teachers on the bandwagon. We've got to be cheerleaders. Uh, for those of us in this room, you got to get, if you can, go to your local high school and say, hey, um, I'm a professional at X, Y, and Z or at X, Y, and Z University. Hey, I'd like to introduce you to OpenStreetMaps. Uh, so a big part of that is, is share, number one, sharing the purpose of OpenStreetMaps. It's not just tracing. It's not just doodling around on an electronic coloring book. Uh, and also, you, the, again, a component I just mentioned is the outreach part. Um, and, and so uh, outreaching and, and, again, selling the purpose. What is the purpose of this uh, is super important. And then the third component is mentorship. Uh, this is a super key factor because the teachers need support. They need us as, as drum majors for OpenStreetMaps to, again, sell them on this, that, yes, you can use this, and this is the wave of the future. And also, to the students can see that, hey, geography isn't just my granddaddy's geography where they just did maps all day, uh, just black outline master maps. This is actually electronic. Um, and, and I want to also uh, stress, too, that this is a great way because we fight for dollars in, in education all, on all levels. Um, I'm sure Stephen Johnson from George Washington University, he's always, the guys at George Washington are always fighting for dollars. In high school, we're fighting for dollars. And I think this is a great way to leverage a lot of STEM money. A lot of money is leaving social studies. I teach geography and only geography. I know that's a dirty word. But I think this is a great way to leverage STEM dollars. So maybe you can get to some of your geography teachers and say, hey, you can use this as a, you know, maybe you could write a STEM grant. Or maybe you could uh, go to your principal and say, hey, can we get some of those STEM dollars that you're giving to that science wing? Um, I know that's one thing I proposed in my school. And I, I, it's like I had the plague or something. Uh, but it's only fair to me that that's geography students also get a piece of that pie. And I think this is a great way to do it. And so uh, one of the things that helped in my classroom to sell kids on OpenStreetMaps, because at first they had the same thing. Mr. Hill, this all this is is tracing. This is ridiculous. Oh, this is stupid. And so I pulled up some real world examples. Uh, I said that, you know, every time you get a lift in life, you're collecting data. Oh, and you see... The, on the bottom, somewhere on this image, there's open street maps. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Um, and they know that I love to travel. That's my biggest hobby is traveling all over the world. And I take, and I'm, I'm that guy that takes picture of the seat backs, uh, the maps on the seat backs. <laughs> and so I just so happened, matter ironically, this is a trip I went to go see Celeste and her family going to Boston on uh, a certain company that runs with Blue. Um, and I was like, oh my God, there's open street map. So I'm a, a full-fledged open street map nerd. Um, and, and so showing the kids that really sold them on it. Another thing too is a lot of students are into things like National Honor Society, commun community service. And this is a great way, to, I've given kids community service hours, uh, as you'll see here in a minute. Um, I think that's a great selling point because kids, especially the ones that really want to go to college, community service, community service. It's like, um, well, maybe not McDonald's, but pick your favorite restaurant and insert the burger there. So, um, And so one of the ways that we um, are able to use OpenStreetMaps is by conducting mapathons. And so when reaching out to teachers, I think it's really, really important um, to explain how OpenStreetMaps is actually helping people. Um, and, and it also, too, develop strong digital citizenship skills. And in, in this day and age, that is a really, really key thing for uh, schools to to teach that are students is digital citizenship. And when you first, when I first tell my students about di stu uh, digital citizenship, they look at me like at me like I'm from Mars. And then I fully explain it. They're like, oh, okay, we kind of get it, um, so to speak. And so um, again, it is important to understand that drawing the boxes, as a lot of these teachers uh, seem to think this is about, is actually collecting data. You're actually doing something. And so I was able to show after we conducted a mapathon show my students, okay, look what you did. You helped some people that are thousands of miles away from you, so to speak. And so by, and by help, helping collect this data, you help com, uh, improve communities. And even it could be something, a, a local project that, that students could do, that conduct. And, and oftentimes, a lot of teachers that are very, very uh, successful with OpenStreetMaps do start with a local project. So Les Reynolds, um, is, is, that's where she started. She started in our local area. Uh, on Cape Cod, and then kind of expanded to the Boston area, and then went from there, and, and really 
has, like I said, taken this on by the horns and, and made this her own. Um, and so compute, you know, an another hurdle is, do I need to have a lot of computer training? Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to the people at Teach OSM and Steven Johnson. Um, they've really done a great job of making this user friendly uh, for a lot of teachers. They often consult teachers. They have webinars for teachers. Um, so there are resources out there for teachers that is like, hey, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. So it, 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 it's, it's a little bit of, it's going to take a little bit of teachers actually getting over the hump and actually doing it too. So there, there's a little bit of buy-in. There's going to have to be a little um, moxie that they're going to have to have as well. So it is, as teachers start to get um, really excited about this, students will start to get really excited about OpenStreetMap. And they will see how finishing this mapping task uh, really, really, and it becomes their own. It becomes an accomplishment. I tell my students, hey, when you go into a resume or something, hey, put you, you know, you're, you, you did this. This is your published work, per se, um, so to speak. And then quickly about our mapathons, uh, we participated in a mapathon. The American Geographical Society hosts, hosts a mapathon twice a year, uh, one in the spring, one in the fall. Uh, my students were fortunate enough to win, I, I guess you can call it win. Um, I told them they win. That made them really, really excited. Um, and, I, you know, I was on a plane from Amsterdam and I got the email and I was like, hey, kids, we won. And of course, they're like, what do we get? Do we get a prize? Are we going to have pizza? But they were super, super excited about their accomplishments. Uh, I had about 89 students, over 80 students that participated. Uh, I can't tell you an exact number of edits we did, but there's a pretty good number. Now, was it perfect? No, because we had one kid that did that somehow magically put in a waterfall that was like 40,000 feet. It's not, it's not fail safe. And I hope one day that we get to a point where um, we can kind of mitigate that. I kind of do that by using um, an unforementioned uh, company that looks like Google um, Forms to kind of keep an idea and I can track their usernames and what they do and where they go. So that kind of helps me in that regard. Of course, again, it's not fail safe. Um, and so, um, you're, we're, a, we're a small, high, well, we're not small anymore. We have 3,000 kids um, in an eastern suburb of Dallas in a city called Mesquite, Texas. And we're surrounded by farms. And a lot of those kids have never been to Dallas, Texas. But OpenStreetMap kind of opens their eyes to see more of the broader world. Um, and and that's, that's what, what makes me feel good. And so this is a project we took part in last spring, mapping Romania, um, in terms of look, looking at uh, flooding um, in the, I don't know how to pronounce that, don't ask me, couldn't tell you, Surrette River, maybe. Um, and so the kids are kind of look like, and of course the proverbial thing is, uh, why don't they just Google it? Which uh, a former governor of Texas said about geogra geographic education, they can just Google it. So one of the turtles I had to come is that you can't just Google it if you don't have Google. And the kids were like, oh, and that was kind of a light bulb moment for them. And so um, this uh, Celeste, you, you can see on the far left in terms of mentorship. So the American Geographical Society has in, in partnership with Teach OSM, they conduct workshops. So, you know, if you guys are going to, um, oh, there it is, uh, Geography 2050 at Columbia University, uh, that'd be a great way if you want to get involved. Uh, like I said, reach out to Teach OSM, reach out to your local schools and see if there's a way you can kind of help. Say, hey, you know, this is, uh, I want to help. I want to volunteer and kind of help your kids in terms of geospatial education. Um, this fall, we have a fall mapathon we're going to participate in. And it's in conjunction with the University of the West Indies. Uh, and I think that is going to be a great way. And particularly with, with hurricane season on the rise, maybe that's something we could do with maybe the University of in somewhere in the Bahamas or somewhere. Um, but, but those opportunities are there, and I think we need to forge more of those opportunities, uh, again, to build that marriage. This is uh, Celeste Reynolds. Is, again, I, I, I stress that Celeste is the queen of OSM in high schools. Um, what, you know, I, mean, I learned so much from her just talking to her on the phone or texting, uh, and there's my contact information. Um, if you have any questions or need some ideas uh, on if you're a you know, professional, geo-professional, and, you know, how do I get in contact with the schools? What do I say? You know, we're here to help you. Or if you're a, you know, K-12 professional, uh, on the other end of how, how you can implement OpenStreetMaps in your classroom, we're here to help as well. Uh, so I want to thank uh, State of the Map US uh, for having me, uh, Teach OSM, and uh, 
I hope you guys have a great rest of the, con rest of the conference. I'll, you know, I've got a few minutes for questions, so if you have any, feel free to ask. Yes. Okay. what are some of the, like, is that, does that work in conjunction with OSM? Is it, you know, what's the advantage of having to create short story maps in Esri, for example, um, versus OSM? And if you don't know, that's fine. No, that's fine. Let me see if I can unpack that, because it was a lot. So let me first talk about ArcGIS. I do, to be open and, all, and, and transparent, I do introduce my students to ArcGIS, and we do use ArcGIS. There's a lot of great materials on ArcGIS um, that are, pre-made, ready to go, uh, like geo uh, inquiries. You can use those tomorrow if you needed to. Those are awesome. Um, using uh, ArcGIS to say, look at, you know, for example, there is a parcel of land uh, in, on, the, on, the corner, on the corner of our parcel of land where our school is, basically. It is the most expensive parcel of land in Dallas County. And it's going for like $9 million. It's only four acres. But it's, 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 it's at the perfect spot. So I use my kids like, okay, RGS, why, what would you put there? And what would make money? You know, those are some examples. Now, to unpack your second question, make sure I got it right, RGIS versus OSM. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe some of the people are more knowledgeable. I don't, from my uh, um, experience, I've never tried to, to be honest with you. Uh, go ahead, maybe he's got the answer. Okay. But do you, go ahead, if you have the answer to the, a quick... Okay, uh, but just quick, ten quick, quick thing here. You can use some of the data that you make in ArcGIS and OSM. I think one of the advantages to using OSM for a classroom is that it's data that can be shared. When it's in a no slide against Esri, but those are siloed. No one else is going to get into your story thing and then modify or m add to the data. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have uh, another comment. Oh, go ahead. Quick. Thank you. Oh, thank you for all the work you guys are doing. That's awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> What's the best way if, if, you know, this group is here to just, and you're not available to get the word out? Right. You know, is Twitter the right way? Is there a mail list? What, how do we get in touch with teachers and bounce ideas? Great question. There is a uh, couple ways. Twitter is a great way. Um, there is a Teach OSM Facebook page. Um, the American Geographical Society has a fellows page. Maybe you could get in contact with them. All of the, the American every every year at their uh, conference, uh, AGS brings in fifty AP Human Geography teachers. And I'm gonna give a plug to Stephen Johnson. Stephen runs a half day workshop on using OSM. And then there's a follow-up session like that Saturday. So that might be a great, that's why I mentioned it, because that could be a great way. Uh, and today, Stephen is running a session at, tell me what time, Stephen? 1.45. And, and specifically for, for high school teachers. So if you guys could come and kind of share some of your expertise, um, and, and that, I think that'd be a great I idea. Yes, sir. My voice carries, but for those of you who are on the OpenStreetMap Slack, there's a Teach OSM sub-channel, and you can reach any of us organizers as well as uh, the teachers that are on the OSM Slack as well. Slack. Yeah, what and is Slack? Slack? Is a yeah, what is Slack? Social media so, platform. So Slack is a... Uh, social media platform? Mm, I don't know if kind it's a social sorta. media platform. Messaging, yeah. Message, it's a glorified messaging app yeah. that kind of replaces email in a way, and it's it's a bit, um, I guess, asynchronous in that. But you can leave short messages, that, and it prevents 
long haranguing email <laughs> exchanges, you know, where there's l replies for, you know, stuff like that. But it, it, it takes email and condenses it. And um, we, we need to put together a tutorial so that everybody can join our, our Slack on there. But um, we do have a Slack. All right. Thank you all for coming.